like to uh, give my condolences to the family and all the friends that are here and uh, let you know that our hearts are with you here at Trinity Gospel Church. We, we love your family and you're precious to us and we've been praying for you and we spend time with your asking God's grace to be with us today. But I'd like to open up a prayer together if we can. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the author and you are the finisher of life. You're the one who breathes life into us and you're the one who calls us home. And today, Father, we've gathered here, not by choice, but we've gathered nonetheless to breathe and to say, see you later. And I pray, God, that you would soften our hearts, that you would help us to hear from you today, Father, and that your love and your mercy would give us the grace that we need in only the way that you can. And so we lean into your grace today, and we lean into your love, and we just thank you, God, that you're with us, and that you're going before this family and friends, and that you will be with them as they go through their grief. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Janie, uh, she raised six wonderful, successful children, and they care about the world, and they care about family, and they're doing a great job. Um, Lori said that um, Janie had always made sure that when her dad was alive, that they had family dinners during birthdays and holidays, and she always seemed to keep everyone together during that time. Uh, in her generosity, she would oftentimes spontaneously just kind of buy something for somebody and, and just bless them. She loved caring for her family, celebrating the holidays, decorating. We all know about her pumpkin rolls. And uh, she especially loved her little pup, Jody. Little Yorkie that everybody else would run from sometimes when they went to Glory's house. But uh, she really loved that fun. You know, life is not easy, and, and Jane knew that Jane knew that firsthand, and she dealt with some losses in life. Parents, her husband, three of her children, and one just recently of this year. And she knew what it was like to go through hardships. She was one of eight children. And, uh, father, she had to be going through some really hard times because, like me, was a pastor. I believe that she confessed Jesus as her Savior, and that she asked Jesus into her life, and yes. because of that, today she's been welcomed into heaven, and she's in a new place where there's streets of gold and crystal sea, but most important, where Jesus is, and the glory of God is. The Bible tells us that in heaven there will be no need for the sun because Jesus will be the light. There's a a river that makes glad the city of God, the river of life. Today she's there with family and friends who've gone on before her. She can't come to us, but we can go to her. Today, we've come here, like I said in my prayer earlier, not by choice, but we've come here nonetheless to grieve and to celebrate the love and the life that she has given to everyone. And because of her, I believe this world has been left better especially when you look at her children and her grandchildren and all the blessings that God has bestowed upon this earth. Amen? But I believe in all that we do, we need to hear the voice of God. And so I ask that you would listen as I read just a portion of Scripture from Psalm 23. And the Bible reports for us that David was a man after God's own heart. We all know this, if you know anything about the Scriptures, that David, even though he was a man after God's own heart, he was not perfect and neither was his life. He faced many battles internally and externally, but one of the greatest things his life taught us is that he knew when to call upon and to lean on God. We see this specifically in Psalm 23. He reads in the first three verses, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. You know, God is our shepherd, and he tends to our needs. He goes before us, and he brings us to a source of comfort, even in times of grief. He brings us to a source where we can find peace. He causes us to find restoration. He goes before us. That's how good our God is. David continues. He said, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I... I will fear no evil, for you, you my God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You know, God leads us through the valleys of life, and through the hard times of life. Jesus said, I'll never leave you as an orphan. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you even to the end of time. I will always be there. Jesus has given us that promise that no matter what, he will always be there. No matter what valley we go through. And it doesn't matter how righteous or how perfect we are. We all have to face the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes we ask questions as, where was God when this happened? And I believe God is there to usher us home. I believe Jesus is always there. Even if the valley is strong, and even if it's hard, and even if it's difficult, and even if it's, if it's the valley of the shadow of death, he is always with us, even till we cross over, because we live beyond the grave. David said this when he thought about the goodness of God, even in the valley of the shadow of death. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, you anoint my head with oil, my cup, it, it runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You know, when you have Jesus, as Jamie confessed, you have goodness, and you have mercy. You have grace and you have mercy. What is grace? Grace is the table that God prepares before you. It's not what you deserve. It's what he gives you because he loves you in spite of your failures and your flaws. And even though your life may not be perfect, one of the greatest things that you can ever experience is the grace of Jesus. The Bible says when we experience the grace of Jesus, we find the love of God. And he who has been forgiven of much, loves much. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced a lot of grace in this life. And I know that Jamie has experienced God's grace and his mercy. And the table has been prepared, prepared before her. And what is the mercy? It's God preparing it even in front of those who think we don't deserve it. Because the truth is none of us do. We don't deserve God's grace. We don't deserve God's mercy. But when we confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our life, and we ask him to forgive us of our sins, and he comes in and dwells with us, and we get to spend time with him and have an intimate relationship, we get to experience the goodness of God. I don't know what level Jamie experienced that at. One of the greatest uh, things I remember is when she was given to uh, our brother in Africa. Sacrificially, she didn't have a lot of money. But as Lori told me, she would just spontaneously out of nowhere sometimes do certain things like that. I know that God speaks to the hearts of many people in this room. And he does it way better than I can as a pastor. And if we want to be able to have the goodness and the mercy of God and go to his house, which is heaven, David said, I will dwell I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's not part time. That's not just one moment at a moment on Sunday. It's, it's all eternity. Eternity is a long time. And if funerals will ever do anything for us, it reminds us that we live beyond the grave and that this life is not all there is. That there's a hope beyond all that we see. And there's a hope. And that hope is found in Christ. I hope you find that. I hope you experience that. Because in it you will find the love of God. In it you will find the mercy of God. And in it you will find the joy of eternity. I pray that Jamie's life and story has blessed you in many ways. And I pray that you and I and everyone in this room will one day get to see her again in a place called heaven. I'm going to close out the prayer, but before I do that, I, I want to give an opportunity for anybody who'd like to say a short word. If you want to, you can. If not, I'll come back up and close out. But I always like to do that at the end in case somebody wants to share something. Feel free to do so.
means I want to encourage you to do today, family, is spend time together and remember the good. A lot of times we can go through and we, we have hurts and we have struggles or things that have been left unsaid. But remember the good. Celebrate today. Celebrate each other. You're here today because James did a life for many of you. God has chosen to do that message to do that. So as you come together, love one another, celebrate one another, laugh, joke, cry, have a good time. Spend time in God's presence and celebrate one another. Amen? Let's close out here. Father, I thank you that you've heard the prayers of your children today, and I know, God, that you are with them, and I pray, God, that you would speak to them, and I pray, Lord, that during this time we would be reminded that we have a hope, that we have a heaven, and that our destiny is beyond what we see. And I pray, God, that we would put our trust in Jesus Christ. And if anybody, Father, in this room needs to come to that place where they acknowledge you, God, all they have to do is simply call on the name of Jesus, and you're right there for them. I know that you'll lead them and that you'll guide them, and so I pray, God, in their hearts, if they need you today, Father, that they would say, Jesus, just come into my life. Forgive me where I may fail, but be my Lord and God. And God, I pray that you would just lead us all. And we thank you, Lord, that you're with us. Holy Spirit, go before us this week, this month, and this year, the days ahead. And we ask this in Jesus' name.